All right, now let me bring in uh, Jennifer Coffin Daffer, uh, retired FBI agent profiler, News Nation Law and Justice contributor. Uh, Jennifer, thank you. Uh, this is the first of these uh, for the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be many more, uh, sadly. What is unusual about this one is uh, highly planned, not that others haven't been, but it is definitely a subcategory. Manifesto, uh, which we don't know the details of, but almost assuredly it'll be a perverse set of grievances and pain. And there was a map of the school where she attended as a child, now uh, transgender identifying as he and him. This is the first one of these I've ever dealt with to my knowledge. Is it a distinction with a difference for you? Well, this person was born a female, so I would put her in the category with the other four females uh, that have committed these types of crimes, specifically school shootings. The idea of a transgender shooter uh, we're going to discuss this. We have two clinicians in this space. One is a forensic psychologist, um, one transgender themselves and helps people understand transition and, and, and the risks. Um, but from a profile's perspective, uh, this is not something where we have to be worried that transgender people in pain may turn to this kind of violence. And it's worth saying because there's such a targeted population in terms of being victimized. Well, I think what was interesting today was when the chief spoke, and this question was posed to the chief uh, from someone in the audience, specifically, did this crime have to do with their, them being transgender? And he paused and he said, we are definitely looking in that direction. We will get back, back to you with more to paraphrase. So he definitely intimated that there was a connection to this crime and the transgender nature of the killer. Mm. You know, in understanding uh, the kind of criminality and how it manifests itself in the mind over time, somebody like this manifesto, map. There's obviously planning. There's obviously thought. Uh, it is an extrapolation here that it's a Christian school and maybe they held grievance for how they felt they were treated within that environment and atmosphere and whether it was open or not to being transgender. Um, a red flag law, Tennessee doesn't have one. Uh, they were split in the legislature. Isn't this exactly the kind of person that those laws are designed for? Because somebody had to know something, Jennifer, right? If there's a manifesto and there was a map, there was planning and pain over time. Is that a safe assumption? Well, we know that they shared a home with their family, with their parents. So clearly there were other people that were in their realm. Uh, possibly they kept this hidden from. But we know they even conducted site surveys which to me was very interesting. They looked at another school, uh, targeting that school, but it was too well fortified. There was too much security there. So then they focused on this Christian school. So I found that very interesting. Uh, I wonder if the other school was another school they had, att had attended as well. But it is more common than not that once we start to scratch at the surface of whomever commits uh, a crime like this, there was darkness, there was pain, there was a uh, struggle, mental health, treated or untreated, recognized or unrecognized. Somebody always knows something. And I'm just very intrigued uh, by this avenue to change, because it seems that it may be our best hope in our society as the state of play is these days, is to help identify people, even though statistically anybody battling a mental illness is much more likely to be a victim of violence than a perpetrator. I don't want to stigmatize the mentally ill. But do you think, as a former agent working crime, that that is an area that we could exploit of identifying people in need and potentially dangerous distress? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If you look at the other four females that have committed these crimes, all of them had serious mental issues due to pain and suffering they had in their lives. There was one that was sexually assaulted and sexually abused. Um, there was another person that actually was identified by a school counselor and said, 
she should never return back to school, but yet nothing was done. I feel like, Chris, we're, we're that person that's just walking up against a brick wall time and time and again, and changes are not being made. Why is it more often male than female? Same reason as all other crimes? Yes. I mean, it's just uh, physically speaking, men are, tend to be more aggressive. They have more testosterone. Uh, they grow up in, you know, carrying guns oftentimes, uh, more uh, involved in games and sports that are more physical than girls. That's just uh, the way it is there, to put it in a nutshell. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.